We will be talking about the navigation lights and shapes and the purpose of uh, these signaling devices on the ship. All right. So the purpose of the navigation lights, um, out of many purposes, uh, one of the purposes is to, is to identify the position of the vessel, uh, to indicate the vessel's course or the aspect. Uh, like for this example, if we see this tugboat here, we know that we are watching its starboard side. Uh, then to indicate the vessel's operations, of course. So the example here is that we can see that this must be a towing vessel and the other purpose is to show a vessel's condition so for example in this case the two red lights indicate that the vessel is not under command so these are the different purposes of the navigation lights and uh, the components of the system components of the navigation light comprise of the power supply uh, that is the main and the auxiliary so when we say the auxiliary the power supplies are actually backed up by not only the main generators but also the emergency generator because uh, navigation lights are considered to be critical equipment on the ship so all the critical equipment on the ship is backed up by the emergency generator right then you have the control panel uh, we also call it the christmas tree lights and the panel of the christmas tree lights so basically this control panel is located inside the wheelhouse inside the ship's bridge and you can uh, switch on and off the lights from the panel and also you can find out if one of the lights are uh, not working and if the lights uh, stop working then there's a buzzer so the whole panel is located inside the ship's bridge uh, then you have the failure alarms so if there's something goes wrong with the navigation lights so you are uh, automatically notified through the failure alarms on the control panel and finally you have the bulb and the housing so these bulbs and the housing are designed to a specific uh, requirement uh, because uh, these uh, side lights, the masthead lights, they all have this housing in a way that uh, these lights are only visible uh, at a certain sector of visibility. And we'll talk more about that as we talk about chromaticity later on. All right. So, based on the collision regulations, uh, the definition of the navigation lights are as follows, and these definitions are from the collision regulations, rule number 21. So the first definition is of the masthead light and the masthead light is defined as a white light which is placed over the fore and aft center line of the vessel and showing an unbroken light over an arc of the horizon of 2 to 5 degrees or from right ahead to 22.5 degrees above the beam on either side of the vessel. So let me show you what that means. So this is uh, the masthead light. This is the sector of the masthead lights. So when we were talking about housing before, the housing of the masthead light will be such that uh, the masthead light will only be seen uh, through uh, a sector of or unbroken sector of 225 degrees over the horizon or from right ahead to 22.5 degrees above the beam on either side of the vessel, both port and stern. So if you can see that from uh, right ahead uh, to 180 degrees is a beam and then on either side of the a beam you can go up to 22.5 and 22.5 which makes it 45 degrees which uh, is in total totality it's 225 degrees so this is the sector uh, over the horizon through which the masthead light vis will be visible so if you are approaching a ship uh, at uh, an angle which falls under this sector then you will be able to see the masthead light of the vessel then let's define the side light the side light is defined as a green light on the starboard side and a red light on the port side and each light should show an unbroken light over an arc of the horizon of 112.5 degrees and from right ahead to 22.5 degrees above the beam on each respective side so that means the green light will be seen from right ahead to 22.5 degrees above the starboard side beam and the port side light will be seen from right ahead to 22.5 degrees above the port side beam only all right so this is how it looks like so in, 112.5 degrees is exactly half of 225 degrees so you know that if the masthead light has a visibility sector of 225 degrees these uh, navigation lights uh, have exactly half of that visibility 
uh, over the horizon. So it's 112.5 on either side. So the green light has 112.5 from right ahead to above the beam and the red light has 112.5 from right ahead to above the beam as well. And of course from a beam, and if, as you go above the beam, it's 22.5 degrees on either side. So if you are approaching the vessel um, at an angle of these sectors, you will see the respective light. So of course if you are approaching it from the port side, you will see the port light and if you are approaching it from the starboard side, you will see the starboard side light, depending on what kind of sector you are, what angle you are approaching the vessel. Then you have the stern light. Uh, stern light is defined as a white light which is placed as nearly as practicable at the stern and showing an unbroken light over an arc of the horizon of 135 degrees and so fixed as to show the light 67.5 degrees from right aft on each side of the vessel. So remember the key word here is as nearly as practicable. So the provision given to the vessels here is that uh, uh, if it is not absolutely practicable to put it at the stern, so the white light or the stern light would be put as nearly as practicable at the stern light. Let me show you in terms of sector what it means. So this is the sector of one, 135 degrees and that means on either side. So if you half 135 degrees is 67.5 degrees on either side of the beam. So of course the, the other 2 to 5 degrees is uh, 2 to 5 degrees is the masthead light, right? So the remaining 1, 1, uh, 135 degrees is your stern light and that's why from uh, if you if you are looking dead center of the stern light so 67.5 degrees on either side of the stern you can see the stern light as well. So if you are approaching the vessel at in this sector at, at this angle that is the only time you will be able to see the stern light. Then you have the towing light. A towing light is classified as a yellow light having the same characteristics as a stern light. That means the towing light will also have um, an unbroken light over an arc of the horizon of 135 degrees and so fixed as to show the light 67.5 degrees from right aft on each side of the vessel, so port and starboard both. Then you have the all-round light which means a light showing an unbroken light over the arc of the horizon of 360 degrees. So all-round light can be seen all through the 360 degrees, so irrespective of whichever angle you are approaching a vessel, you should be able to see the all-round so an example of the all-round light are your anchor lights or your not under command lights or restricted uh, inner ability to maneuver lights. These are all all-round lights. Then you have the flashing light. And a flashing light is uh, defined as a light which flashes at regular intervals at a frequency of 120 flashes or more per minute. So if I could see you through the, if I could show you through the animations, I have tried to design the lights in a way that it flashes at a rate of 120 flashes or more per minute. Now note that this specification is as in Coldrex Rule 21 F, which is quite different than the same notation given to a light as on the nautical charts. So you must refer to the list of lights for those specifications. All right. So anchor lights and working warning lights require to be displayed will have the same characteristics as all round lights and all flashing lights as applicable. And let's talk about visibility of lights and this refers to rule 22 of collision regulations for visibility of lights. So these are the uh, these are the rules that the navigation lights and shapes are to comply with. So you can see rule number 22 talks about visibility of lights and it's pretty straightforward here. So depending on the length of your vessel uh, the visibility of the masthead light, and side light and towing light and the all round light is mentioned. So if you are a vessel of more than 50 meters or more in length, your masthead light should be visible at the following minimum ranges. So 6 miles, 3 miles, 3 miles or 3 miles. So similarly, it's pretty self explanatory that depending on your length of the vessel, this is the minimum range at which your masthead light, side light, towing light or all round light should be visible. So of course, uh, most of you may be sailing on vessels of more than 50 meters or more in length and this is these are the requirements of a vessel more than 50 meters or more in length. Then certain exemptions are also provided in the collision regulations in Appendix 1, Rule 38. Now let's talk about side light screens. The side light of vessels of 20 meters or more in length shall be fitted with inboard screens painted matte black to reduce or avoid the glare and diffusion of light at source. On vessels of less than 20 meters in length, the side lights if necessary are to meet the requirements as per the collision regulations shall be fitted with inboard matte black screens. With a combined lantern using a single vertical filament and a very narrow division between the green and red sections, external screens need not be fitted. 
So sometimes a smaller vessels can carry a combined lantern where the green and red are in the same kind of housing. Then we have a color specification of lights as per the rules of the road as well. So this refers to the chromaticity of the navigation lights. The chromaticity is actually it's an objective specification of the quality of color regardless of its luminance. That is uh, so determined by its color finesse and its uh, hue or the stimulus. So that basically means if I have need to explain this to you in simple words, uh, the, the navigation lights are required to be maintaining a certain chromaticity or certain luminosity which means that uh, for the sector of the light at which they should be visible, uh, the color of that light should not be confused for any other light. So for example, if your masthead light is to be seen at an arc of 225 degrees, that light should be seen as the white light it is. It should not be confused with something like a yellow or the red should not be confused for some other color like pink or the green should not get confused for blue or something like that. All right. And similarly, the yellow stern light, uh, the yellow towing light or the um, yellow towing light, yes, should not be confused for a white light of a stern light or something like that. So that that color quality needs to be maintained throughout the sector uh, of which the color, the, the navigation light is visible. So that's what it basically means. So that's why they've given you a chart here. And this refers to the chromaticity graph before. And you can see here that uh, the, the chromaticity sectors of the green light, the blue and the red and the yellow are specified and mentioned here. So that's why the manufacturers who manufactures the navigation lights need to ensure that uh, the color uh, luminance and the hue or the colorfulness of the stimulus is maintained throughout the sector of visibility. So if, if ever it goes into the borderline, sometimes the green light may be confused into a yellow uh, or uh, an orange or yellow light or yellow light may get confused for a white light, so on and so forth. Right, so the sectors of the chromaticity are specified in this chromaticity diagram. Now if you think about the navigation lights and the alarm systems on which it works, normally, norm, normally that uh, each navigation light has a separate alarm. Now from the diagram you can see that the navigation light is in series with the main circuit. Now if it fails, the current ceases and the coil in the relay is de which then switches on the alarm buzzer. So you can hear the alarm here. Now the pilot light being in series with the navigation light also goes out. If the pilot light fails, which is paralleled by a shunt resistor that allows the current to still pass, the navigation light shall remain on. But the change in the current due to pilot light failure may activate the buzzer. There however, I'm sorry, there however is uh, no confusion as the watchkeeper will be able to clearly see the failure of the pilot light distinct from the actual navigation light. So make sure you always test the navigation light before sailing and check the indicators when you switch the navigation lights on. Alright, so I just wanted to show this to you again but I kept looking on the next slide. Right. So if navigation light fails for some reasons, the following are the recommended steps. Check the fuse, switch to an alternate circuit as the lights on certain ships are provided in duplicate. Change the bulbs, call an electrician or a technician, test all the lights on the pilot switches and verify physically that they work and then inform the master. For sure you have to inform the senior officer as well. Alright, now we move on to navigation shapes. Shapes are used for navigation purposes, are balls diamonds, cones and cylinders which are of specific sizes and are black in color. Alright, so if you think about the ball, the ball is not less than 0.6 meters in diameter. So the size of the ball is 0.6 meters in diameter. And the size, base and height of the cone is about 0.6 meters as well, should not be less than that. The base diameter of a cylinder is 0.6 meters its height and its height being twice its base that's 1.2 meters and the diamond is actually two cones joined at the base so the base of the cones cannot be less than 0.6 right uh, uses of the navigation shapes and uh, they are used to display any condition of the vessel so for example here the black ball is displaying a shape at anchor uh, the ball, the diamond and the ball in series are, are displaying a vessel restricted in ability to 
maneuver. A cylinder indicates a deep draft vessel, and finally, a cone indicates a sailing vessel under power. Right here, the vessel engaged in fishing is being displayed, and the additional cone displays the nets extending. Uh, positioning of steps. So remember the above mentioned the, the the examples that I mentioned here are displayed by vessels in different conditions. And for full description, you can please refer to the collision regulations. All right. Uh, the positioning of the shapes. If the positioning of the shapes are to be discussed, the shapes are, be, are to be displayed at the yardum uh, on the Monkey Island or above the bridge in a vertical line, or as far as practicable in a vertical line. The minimum vertical distance between two shapes displayed in a line is not to be less than 1.5 meters. All right. The reason is so that from a distance if somebody is observing your vessel and they are trying to make out the shapes, they should be easily able to distinguish the shapes from one another. That is the reason of the distance between the shapes. Anything less and the people watching might get confused. Then we move on to signaling devices. When we talk about signaling devices, uh, as per different publications pertaining to life saving on board, you must pay particular attention to the search and rescue ones because it is one of the statutory requirements that an acceptable system of signaling devices should be carried on board. Not uh, all of these need to be maintained or need to be placed on the bridge. However, the bridge watchkeeper and the ship's officer should be aware of the use, the number, and the location of the signaling devices for use in emergency or um, normal conditions. So the use of the navigational signaling devices, the purpose of it is to send signals to other vessels to attract the attention of other vessels. Sometimes some vessels uh, may be at a risk of collision and they are supposed to be taking action and they don't take action, then you can attract the attention of those vessels and you can indicate the condition and position of your own vessel. So sometimes uh, if you are in navigating in restricted visibility, it's fog and you can't see anything. So you can use the appropriate sound signal and you can use your whistles and the foghorn to indicate that uh, your presence in the sea. Right, so we have some of the visual signaling devices. The visual signaling devices are uh, used to uh, indicate the send signals or attract attention of the other vessels. So the shapes that or the devices that come under this category are lights. This is the Morse signaling or the eldest lamp. And the eldest lamp and the second one are the shapes. These are all visual. And then of course you also have the flags. All right. And finally you have you can also use the distress pyrotechnics if it's a real emergency. All right. Uh, for lights you have the eldest lamp or this is the Morse signaling lamp. So the eldest lamp or the eldest daylight long range signaling lamp is actually one of the visual signaling devices that you will definitely come across as a watchkeeper. It is used primarily for long range manual signaling. And it is mentioned in different publications such as the collision regulations, the IMSR manual as well as the International Code of Signals. As you may infer, it is considered to be one of the most important life saving devices on board. Uh, it was named after the inventor himself. Um, ACW Eldis and the Solas Chapter 5 uh, dictates that all ships of 150 gross tonnage and upwards and passenger vessels irrespective of size shall be fitted with a daylight signaling lamp. Alright, um, most types are powered by 12 by 24 volts DC. Alright, sometimes spares are of, co of course available so that if something goes wrong you should be able to repair it. Then you have the more signaling light and these are also mentioned in the Colrex Rule 34. So these lights can uh, be used to signify, for example, as you can see one flash means I'm altering goes to starboard and two flashes means I'm altering goes to port. So you should be able to use this as well. So more signaling light uh, in addition vessels are required to have a system of visual signals that may be working in conjunction or independently with the sound signals. So normally for this one, it is usual to have an all round white light fitted to the mast. When the ship's whistle is used, the Morse light will also flash for the time the switch is manually or automatically activated. Then you have the flags and this is also from Solas chapter 5. 
and the solar chapter 5 dictates that all ships which in accordance with the present convention are required to carry a radio installation shall also carry the international code of signals as may be amended by the IMO or the International Maritime Organization. So the code shall also be carried by any other ship which is in the opinion of the administration has a need to use it. All ships shall also carry an update volume of volume 3 of the International Aeronautical and Maritime Search and Rescue Manual which is also called the IMC Manual. All right. Then the standards are prescribed. So then you have the navigational signaling device audible. That's the ship's vessels which are required for all vessels greater than 12 meters. Then uh, you have, now you know why this is happening is because I have put in the sounds of the different sound signaling devices in my presentation and whenever I do that my PowerPoint starts to get hanged. I hope so that uh, just bear with me and it will be fine. Alright, so then you have the bell which are required for all vessels greater than 20 meters and finally you have the gong which are required for all vessels greater than 100 meters. So of course uh, vessels of greater than 100 meters shall have all the whistles, bell and gong as well. All right, but if a vessel is less than 12 meters, just a whistle would be fine or a vessel is less than 20 meters, a whistle and bell would be fine. They don't need a gong. So the ship's whistles, uh, some of the requirements is that its maximum intensity should be right ahead. The sound pressure level sh shall not be less than 110 decibels at a distance of one meter. And if two whistles are fitted, they may not be sounded simultaneously. The sound signaling apparatus may be fitted through sound automatically by the means of a switch which you can choose the manual setting or the automatic setting. So they remember that uh, the equi equipments or the sound signaling equipments must comply with Annex 3 of the coal regs with regards to sound intensity and size. All right. And then we move on to the final thing which is the sound reception systems. Now sound reception systems are acoustical uh, electronic navigation aids to enable the officer on the watch to hear sound signals inside a totally enclosed bridge in order to perform the lookout function as required in the collision regulations. Now use of these uh, sound reception systems on the ship is mandated by SOLAS chapter 5. Uh, check the regulation numbers, I think these are the regulation numbers. So that chapter 5 dictates that on all ships irrespective of size to provide when the ship's bridge is totally enclosed, so when the ship's officer or the lookout cannot go outside the bridge and unless the administration otherwise determines. So when we talk about administration, we're talking about flag state, IMO, a sound reception system or other means to enable the officer in charge of the navigational watch should be fitted to hear sound signals and determine their direction. So if you see, I am showing you just an example here of a company named Zenital that uh, manufactures and supplies such sound signaling devices and I'll show you through animations as well what how it works. So these sound signal devices monitor frequencies between 70 to 18 hertz. So, so what 820 hertz. So what happens is these uh, devices they pick up the signals of other vessels. So when the other vessels are uh, sounding their whistles, sounding their whistles, the uh, the sound reception system can pick up these signals between the frequency of 70 and 820 hertz. And then four of the weatherproof microphones are mounted outside the wheelhouse and connected to the audio amplifier and loudspeaker within the bridge. So by use of the four microphones, the VSS system or the VSS sound signal reception system will detect the direction of the incoming signal and activate the corresponding lights at the panel. I'll show you all this, how it works uh, through animations. And the four microphones operate always in pairs depending on the direction of the received sound signal. So all four will not work together, they will always work in pairs. And the microphone that first detects the sounds registers it and will, reg will be registered and it will lock against influence from other microphones. This will repeat each time a signal is strong enough to trigger the detector. So let me show you by animations what I mean. So these are the four microphones for example placed outside and there's a, and this is towards the open deck area. This is the aft forward and aft. This is on the port side and starboard side. And then you have a panel inside the so you can see in this case here, these uh, reception systems are working in pairs. So that means that uh, a vessel may be approaching from the port bow uh, because of which the two microphones are now picked up the signal and the sound signaling signal and they have logged in the direction of the uh, vessel in which the other vessel is approaching your vessel. All right, so always two work in pairs. So the other two then don't work. And then you have the amplifier inside which amplifies the sound. 
So this is very useful in cases where uh, you have a totally enclosed bridge and maybe you are navigating in uh, restricted visibility into complete fog and you cannot see the other vessels. Then this uh, reception system comes very handy. So you can pick up the approaching vessel. Of course you have the radars on as well but this is like an additional safety measure and you can sometimes because the radars don't pick up the vessel's signal so you can pick it off. Alright, so I hope this uh, lesson was a quick lesson on the navigation lights, shapes and signaling devices. If there is something I have missed, please let me know. Uh, and if there is something I was not very clear about, please let me know as well in comments section. I am happy to answer your questions. Um, please let me know how I can improve uh, any of these videos. And thanks for watching. I will see you soon uh, with my next video. Alright, bye guys.